All right, today you're going to be looking at a lesson on two very important terms for both reading and writing, and those two terms are connotation and tone. Today's lesson is about how words actually have feelings too, and they have feelings attached and associated with them, and those feelings attached to those certain words create something called tone that you can identify when you read different texts or that you can create when you're writing your own story. Let's start out with some definitions so you have a basic understanding of what we're talking about. Any word has two things going on with it. It has a connotation and it has a denotation. Okay, so let's take a look at what connotation means. So the connotation of a word is not the literal definition of a word. This is not what you would go to the dictionary for and find, find it written there. The connotation of a word is the feeling that a specific audience has with a word, about a word. It's the feeling we associate with a word. The denotation of word is what you're more used to thinking about. And all that denotation means is the literal definition, the actual definition of a word like you would find in the dictionary. So every word has a definition. It means something. But then there's also feelings we associate with certain words. And it's helpful when you're analyzing uh, something that you're reading or you're writing yourself to think about not just the definition, what a word means, but what feeling does your audience have about that word? So some words that have the same or even similar denotations or definitions have very different connotations or feelings. So words can basically mean the same thing, but they can have a totally different feeling associated with that word to the audience. So some words have a more positive connotation, some words have a more negative connotation. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This cartoon is a good illustration of connotation, right? Uh, there are these two apparently uh, cannibals here and they're cooking this one gentleman right in a, in a big pot and it says, actually we don't like the term cannibal, we prefer to be called homovores. And of course that root word right there means human being, right? So they're saying it means the same thing. We eat human beings, but homivores sounds better than cannibal. Even though they mean the same thing, cannibal, we have a lot of negative feelings with that word, and we don't have as many negative feelings with this word. Let me show you another example. Prey has such negative connotations. I'd like to think of us as crucial links in the web of life. It's one thing if you're called prey, that has negative feelings associated to it. That means somebody's going to try to eat you or you're lower down on the food chain. These two fish prefer being called crucial links in the web of life because it sounds better. Okay, let's practice this. Let's look at some words, some groups of words that have basically the same denotation. They have the same definition um, they mean basically the same thing, but to us, they have different feelings to them, different connotations. Some of them are more positive feelings for us. Some of them are more negative feelings for us. Let's take a look. So notice, all of these words mean basically the same thing. Childlike, youthful, childish, young. They all mean the same thing. But what I want you to do is take a look at these words pause the video really quickly and decide which words you think have a more positive connotation and which words you believe have a more negative connotation. Go ahead and pause the video and decide that. Okay, hopefully you identified things like this. I think to most audiences, childish would have a very negative connotation while childlike might have a more positive connotation connotation or feeling, right? Um, young might be kind of neutral. It might be a little bit negative connotation. It might be a positive connotation. Youthful might be a more positive way of saying it. But each one of these has a different feeling associated with it. Let's try it again. 
Go ahead, look at these four words that basically mean the same thing, and think about the different feelings you associate with it. Go ahead and pause the video right now. Okay, so we have chick, female, woman, and lady. We would probably most of us agree that chick is the most negative connotation, and maybe lady or woman is a more positive connotation. But you can see each one of these words have different feelings associated with them. Let's try it again. Take a look at this one. Look at these four words and decide which ones you think have a more positive feeling and which ones have a more negative feeling or connotation. Go ahead and pause the video and take a look. Hopefully you notice that like words like skinny in this situation is probably the more negative connotation, right? Uh, slender has a little bit more positive connotation. The difference between thin and slim falls somewhere in between, right? And you can look at these words that mean the same thing, but they have very different connotations to them. Let's try it again. Look at these four words and decide the connotations for them. As a guy, I never cry, right? As a man, I never cry. I uh, tear up sometimes. That doesn't sound as bad. In fact, I don't even tear up. I get watery eyes. That's all that happens. I certainly don't weep, right? Weep has a negative connotation. Or cry, that has a negative connotation. What we call things, they can mean the same, but to different audiences, the different feelings associated with them really matter. They really matter. Think about if you were crying, weeping, tearing up, or your eyes were watery, which one would you want to use to explain what you were doing? Let's try another one. Look at these four words and decide out of these four words which is the most positive and which is the most negative. Go ahead and pause it and try it out. So between these four words, naked, nude, unclothed, natural. Probably the one with the least offensive connotation is the word natural, right? Oh, I was out there and I was in nature. I was natural. Um, maybe slightly less uh, offensive too, maybe also on that end would be something like unclothed, right? But when we get to nude, maybe that's a little bit better than the last one, which is the most negative, right, is naked, is the most abrasive there, or the most uh, one that's that's the harshest. Okay, so let's see how this works in something larger like a sentence. Let's look at these two sentences, and let's first of all notice that the words in each sentence that are uh, in color that those words mean basically the same things. Uh, by definition, they're saying the same thing, but they have very different feelings associated with them, and they create a very different overall impression on the audience. Let's take a look at the first one. Internet users fool people into looking unintelligent online. Okay, compare that sentence to Internet trolls trick people into looking stupid online. What's the overall feeling of these two sentences? Do you see a difference? Let's look a little closer. Trolls, using that word trolls, is more negative than the word user we saw in the first sentence. It has a more negative connotation, right? Using the word trick instead of fool, again, has a more negative connotation. And stupid certainly has a more negative connotation than unintelligent. And what you'll notice is that when that happens, that the entire sentences, the entire sentences themselves, change their feeling and meaning. So the connotation of words really matters. So the next step to understanding connotation is to understand that when you Think about the connotation of words in a larger piece of writing, that all of that connotation together creates tone. And tone is the author's attitude or feeling toward the audience and the subject of the piece of writing. So the tone is where we kind of see how does the author feel 
about the subject they're talking about. Do they are they happy about it? Excited about it? Are they angry? Are they upset? How do they feel toward the audience that they're writing to? Are they mad at that audience? Are they hopeful towards that audience? Do they want the audience to like them? And we can determine this tone by looking at connotation. Remember the rhetorical triangle. This is an important thing to remember whenever you write or read something that's been written. There's always a connection between these three things, right? The writer is always connected to the audience. The writer is always connected to the subject. The audience is always connected to the subject, always connected to the writer. When we think about connotation, we should start asking us these questions to lead us to tone. What is the author's attitude to, toward the audience? Based on the connotation we saw, does the author give us any hints about how they feel towards their audience. And also, what is the author's attitude towards the subject they're writing about? Does the connotation of the words when they talk about that subject show us anything about their attitude towards it? So, that's how connotation creates tone. Let's look at that sentence we looked at earlier. Internet trolls trick people into looking stupid online. This is the more negative connotative sentence. When we consider all these together, these words create a negative tone towards the subject. Internet trolls, right? It creates a more negative tone. So why don't you try this out real quick? Um, you can even look for this in a piece of art or a cartoon, all right? So I want you to think about these two questions before we look at this cartoon. When we look at the cartoon, what is the artist's attitude toward cursive writing? What's the artist's tone towards cursive writing? What's the artist's tone or attitude towards school? Okay. Also think about what in the cartoon showed you these attitudes. So let's take a look at it. First frame says third grade. Got a teacher here. It says, hello class, my name is Mr. Troll. This year we'll be learning cursive, which you'll use all the way through high school and college. Then we have the student working very hard, tongue sticking out, trying to learn cursive, right? Then they get to sixth grade. They're trying even harder. They're sweating. Their cursive's looking a little better, right? They finally did it. The cursive is beautiful. Their eyes are watery with joy. Then they get to ninth grade, freshman year. Welcome to freshman English. No assignments written in cursive will be accepted, and all papers must be typed. And then, problem, thinking back to that third grade teacher. Okay, so think about this cartoon. Think about the words that were written in the drawings, and, and think about if the author created a certain tone towards things, using the details, right? What is the author's attitude towards cursive writing? Well, hopefully you'd see that the author's attitude is maybe frustration, right? And frustrated with school. So we saw through the evidence on the slides that the author's tone was a frustrated tone. The creator of this cartoon had a frustrated tone. If you can do that with a cartoon, you can do that with a piece of writing. All you have to do is ask yourself a few questions when you're reading something. Questions like, what connotation do the words have? Pick out specific words and think about what the connotation of those words are, the feeling of those words. Then ask yourself, why did the author choose words with these connotations instead of other words? Once again, in the English language, we have a lot of words to mean similar things. There are words that we could use to describe the same thing and get the point across, but those words have different feelings. So why did the author choose to use these words with these connotations instead of other words? And then finally, ask yourself this. When considered together, all those things together, what does this show us about the author's attitude toward the subject? If you will ask yourself those three questions, you will be able to come up with what the tone is. So finally, I wanted to look at an example of what this looks like in an actual piece of literature. This short excerpt is from one of my favorite books, pretty intense book. It's called Night by Elie Wiesel. And um, it's a true story of his experiences 
during World War II as a, a prisoner in a concentration camp. And he writes this sentence, and I want you to pay attention to the words that are in red, words that definitely have feelings or connotations associated with them. Okay, Never shall I forget that night, the first night in camp, which has turned my life into one long night, seven times cursed and seven times sealed. Never shall I forget those moments which murdered my God and my soul and turned my dreams to dust. Never shall I forget these things, even if I am condemned to live as long as God himself. Never. These words in red are good examples of words that have negative connotation. That you could say the connotation, the feelings associated with these words are dark, depressing, sad, intense, right? And when you look at even just a few sentences here from Mr. Weisel, you can look and see that when you look at them all together, all those words with all the connotations together, it creates an overall tone in the author's writing. And we could describe that tone as a dark tone, a depressing tone, a sad tone, an intense tone. Um, and that's how connotation works to show tone. So, you should understand now what connotation is, that words have feelings too, and how the feelings of specific words can give us ideas about what the tone of a piece of writing is.